Over the last decades, the topic of meditation has gained great currency in the Western world, while in the East it has long been a staple of life. We've all seen paintings and statues of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in deep meditation. There are countless systems, techniques, and methods practiced around the world. Krishnamurti's approach starts with freedom, not with the burdens of yesterday. He looks beyond the myths and traditions which would tell us how. All systems which are based on what others have experienced, he says, only bind us more closely to the old, to the past. In beginning with I don't know, we are free to step into the beauty of the unknown. Krishnamurti on meditation. So what is meditation? Not how to meditate. When you ask how, there's somebody to tell you what to do. Right? If you don't ask how, and in and say, what is meditation? Then you're, you have to exert your own capacity, your own energy, experience your however limited, you have to think, right? And say, well, tell me what meditation, I'll go off into some kind of silly dream. The word meditation means to ponder over, to think over, to be concerned with, And also it means, the root meaning, to measure, both in Sanskrit, Latin, Greek, and so on, and in English, to measure. And also, inwardly, we're always measuring. I have been, I will be. Right? I am this, I have been this, I must be that, right? Which is not only measurement, but comparison. Measurement is comparison. That is, meditation is the understanding of the world, the meaning of measurement, and the ending of measurement, psychologically, which is to become. The ending of that, and the seeing, the limited thought. Thought is everlastingly limited. It may think it of the limitless, but it's still born of the limit. Right? So, it comes to an end. So the brain, which has been chattering along, muddled the limit, has suddenly become silent. without any compulsion, without any discipline, because it sees the fact, the truth of it. And the fact and the truth has 
as we pointed out earlier, is beyond time. <coughs> and so thought comes to an end. And where there is space and silence, it's only then something new which is untouched by time, thought can come, can be. That may be the most holy, the most sacred, maybe, cannot give it a name. It is perhaps the unnameable. And when there is that, uh, then there is intelligence, compassion and love. There is the meditation of the Zen Buddhists, then there is the Buddhist meditation, right? Which is very complicated, I won't go to it. And there is the Hindu Buddhist meditation. Then some people from the Tibet have brought over their meditation. And the gurus invent their own meditation. The word guru in Sanskrit means wait. Wait. Heavy. And also that word has different meanings, which is one who helps to eradicate ignorance. You understand? Not the one who imposes his ignorance on others. <laughs> I'm glad we can laugh. <laughs> to this speaker, all that is not meditation, because those are all the result of conniving, maneuvering. Right? So gradually, if you practice all those things, your brain inevitably becomes dull. Right? Conscious meditation is no meditation. Deliberate meditation is like any other form of achievement in business. Right? I set out being poor to be a rich man. What's the difference between that man who pursues money, power, position, and the other fellow who says, I'll meditate to achieve nirvana or heaven or silence? None at all. Both are achieving what they want. Only one calls it uh, spiritual, the other calls it business. And we swallow them both. So, in medit- there is a meditation which is not conscious, deliberate. In that meditation there is utter stillness. It is not the stillness of thought, 
that stillness is not the product of hope. That's why it's very important to understand thought, thinking and all that. And when the brain is utterly quiet, then you'll find out for you, then that which is nameless is, that cannot be described, that cannot be given any quality, that is not the saviour, that's nothing, it's something entirely different. So there is that something that is beyond time, because all time has stopped. That's real, that's the true meditation, that is the religious, really true religious mind. Meditator is different from meditation. As long as there is a meditator, there is no meditation. So we are saying meditation implies total freedom from all comparison and measurement. And this is different. Because meditation is something that is marvellous if you know what to do. Not you, meditation. Meditator is different from meditation. As long as there is a meditator, there is no meditation. You understand all this? Because meditator is concerned about himself, how he is progressing, what he is doing, I hope he'll be better tomorrow, why anxiety, why... He's concerned about... In meditation, there is no meditator at all. Uh, once you see this uh, for yourself, the beauty of it, the depth of it, the suffering of it. So, he says, the practice of meditation is no meditation. Sitting on the banks and looking, at the, you know, <laughs> making the mind more and more dull, and say, yes, I've spent an hour, marvellous. And you prostrate to him, touch his feet. By the way, please don't touch my feet. That's most undignified as a human being. You can hold my hand any amount you like, but not the feet of somebody. It's inhuman, undignified. Right. So, meditation is something that cannot be practiced. As you practice a violin, a piano, and singing, you practice. That means you want to reach a certain level a perfection, and in meditation there is no level, nothing to be achieved. Therefore, it is not a conscious, deliberate meditation. I wonder if you understand all this. There is a meditation which is totally undirected, totally if I can use the word unconscious, 
This is not a deliberate process. So we are asking, if space contains time, yesterday, tomorrow, and all the rest of it, it's not space. So is there an end to time? Which means, is there an end to thought? So which means, is there an end to knowledge? So is there an end to experience, which is total freedom? And this is meditation. Personally, if I may talk a little about myself. Please do. I have watched, attended, went into certain groups of various types, just to look. And I said, this isn't it. Mm -hmm. I discarded it instantly. If we could honestly put away all that and ask, what is meditation? Good. Not how to meditate. In asking that question, what is meditation, we'll begin to find out, we'll begin to meditate ourselves. I don't know if I'm... Yes, you do. You make yourself very clear. We're back again to, to the distinction between an activity, the goal of which lies outside the activity, in contrast to the activity, it's the end of which is yes. intrinsic to itself. Yes. Sir. Yes. So, could we start with saying, I do not know what meditation is? Yes, yes, yes. I'm willing to start there. It's, it's really marvelous if you start from there. It certainly is. It, it brings a great sense of humility. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That is a tremendous acknowledgement of, of a freedom from the established no. The established traditions, the established methods, the established schools and practices. Exactly. I, I start with something I don't know. That has, for me, that is a great beauty. I've, then I am free to move. Exactly. I'm free to flow or swim with in the inquiry. So I don't know. And then from that we can start. Mm -hmm. Is meditation divorced from daily living? Mm -hmm. The daily conduct, the daily desires of fulfillment, ambition, greed, envy, the daily competitive, imitative, conforming spirit, the daily uh, appetites, sensual, sexual, other forms of intellectual and so on. Is meditation divorced from all that? Or is meditation flows through all that? <laughs> covers all that, includes all that. Otherwise, meditation has no meaning. So if it is divorced from life, then meditation has no meaning. It's just an escape from life, hmm? escape from all our travails and miseries, sorrows, confusion. And therefore, it's, it's not worth human touching. Mm, yes. 
Mm -hmm. Right. If it is not, and it is not for me, then what is meditation? The following. Mm -hmm. Is it an achievement, an attainment of a goal? Or is it a perfume, a beauty that pervades all my activities? Therefore, it has tremendous significance. Meditation yes. has tremendous significance. Then the next question is Is it the result? of a search, mm -hmm. joining Zen group, then the uh, another group, you follow one after the other, one after the other, one practice this and practice that, don't practice, uh, take a vow of celibacy, poverty, or don't speak at all, fast, hmm? <laughs> in order to get there. For me, all those are Totally unnecessary. Yes. And meditation must be or is, when you deny all this mm, systems, methods, gurus, authorities, becomes a religious question. Yes. Profoundly religious question. Profoundly religious. Oh, yes. Meditation covers the whole field of existence. Meditation implies freedom from the method, the system, because I don't know what meditation is. I start from that. Yes. I therefore I start with freedom, not with their birth. Miss Marvellous, start with freedom and not with their burden. This business of holding up fragmentation to us from that perspective is really nothing more than a species of journalism. Journa absolutely. Isn't it? Yes, of course, yes. Propaganda. Of course. So I discard all that. So I have no burden. Therefore, mind is free to inquire what is meditation. Is there a way of living our daily life in which there is no control? Right? As part of meditation. I wonder if you are. Is there a question one must ask oneself? Is there in daily existence? A way of living in which every form of control doesn't exist at all. Religions, philosophy, your teachers, every your family, mother, control. But we have never inquired into who is the controller. The controller is put together in the past. The past is the knowledge which is thought. 
thought has separated itself as the controller and the control, and concentration is all that. And in understanding that, we are asking much more fundamental question, which is, can one live in this world with a family, all the rest of it, without a shadow of control? Right? Personally, I have never read about all this. It wouldn't be authentic, it has no meaning. But to have quick insight, you understand? To see instantly the falseness of all religious organizations, all of them. And therefore, you are out of it. To see instantly that the observer is the observed. And therefore, no effort is it's so. It's only effort exists when there's division. You follow? So does it indicate our brains have become so dull? Because we have been trained, trained, you follow? So it has lost its pristine quickness. It's capacity to see directly and then without all the explanations and words, words, words. But unfortunately one has to go into this, because our minds, our brains are cannot grasp instantly, for example, that truth has no path. You understand? To see the, the immensity of that statement, the beauty of that statement, and put aside all powers, the Asiatic, the Western, the North, South, East, West, so that your brain becomes extraordinarily active. 